If you're looking for the best screen protectors that you can get right now for your brand new Samsung Galaxy Fold 5, I've got them all right here. And we're going to be testing each and every one of these with a drop and a scratch test to let you know which ones are the worst and which ones I think are worth your time and money. And I guarantee you're gonna find one screen protector here you're gonna absolutely love. Now make sure you stick with me to the end of the video because I will be giving you my personal favorite screen protectors out of all the ones we've tested here today. And as always, I will be putting product links for all these screen protectors in the video description. And if you wanna show me that you care that I'm doing this for you, hit that like button, it only takes a second. And you can also help support my channel by donating using the thanks button. So grab your snacks, sit back and relax, and enjoy the video. So before I begin, I just wanna let you know that before every single installation, I will be thoroughly cleaning and drying off the screen so I don't have to show that to you for every screen protector installation. And I also wanna let you know that I will be installing the inner film screen protector over the screen protector that came with the phone because I don't recommend that you take it off unless you absolutely have to. And then here we have the Whitestone Dome all-in-one pack. So here we get two tempered glass screen protectors for the front of your phone. Here are your two camera protectors. You get a squeegee, four installation packets, some foam pads, and two inner screen film protectors. So first we'll start by putting down our little foam stopper. Then peel off the underside of the protector. You're going to hold on to the side tabs and put this in place. Now once you have it down where you want it, place your squeegee right behind the middle line here. We're going to pull back on the number one and make sure this goes up and over your screen and just squeegee out. Make sure you get out any bubbles. Then you're gonna flip your phone around, put the squeegee behind the middle line once more, lift up on two and do the same exact thing. Make sure the screen protector goes up and over your screen. And then squeegee out any bubbles you might see. Then you're gonna take one of your guide stickers. We're going to put it in the corner and we're going to very carefully lift up on the top layer of the screen protector. But when you do that, make sure you don't take the bottom screen protector with it. Now be very careful when you try to lift up the front screen protector because you don't want to lift up the screen protector underneath with it because if you do, you'll ruin it and you have to use your other one that came with it. So just lift it up a little bit. If you don't see the screen protector underneath separating, put it back down, press it in place, and try again. You might want to even try a different corner as well. And there we go. Looks like a pretty flawless installation as far as touch. Feels just like the screen that came on the phone. Very nice, there are no bubbles, no lifting. Touch seems to be working just fine. No issues there. Let's test out our fingerprint rejection. So it does seem to pick up some fingerprints. See how easily it, yep. Very easy to just wipe away. No problems there. It looks really nice. Now, just to let you guys know, I did install this over the screen protector that comes with the phone. I did not take it off, although Whitestone Dome recommends that you take the factory screen protector off before you put this one on. But everything seems to be in perfect order. Let's fold it up for the very first time and see what happens. Still looking perfect to me. Don't see any lifting, no bubbles, nothing in the crease. Let's fold it a few more times just to, for good measure. And that looks really good to me. So I'm liking the screen protector so far. So now let's install the outer display tempered glass screen protector. So again, you wanna make sure that you thoroughly clean off your screen, dry it off. And this screen protector is even easier to install. So you're gonna take one of your screen protectors, remove the foam pad. We're going to peel off this step number one here, making sure it doesn't take the screen protector with it. Then just simply place this whole thing over the top of your phone, making sure that the arrow is pointing towards the camera on your phone. Just press that into place, run your finger down the middle. Then continue to press down on, this, on the guide and we're going to lift up the sticker then just lift up the guide. 
Now you may see some bubbles. If you do, you can just squeegee them out. But for the most part, it should just adhere to your screen. And there we go. Beautiful installation. It does look like it is case friendly. It's nice and smooth, just like the glass that's actually on the phone. As far as fingerprints goes, it does pick up some fingerprints, but you can easily wipe those away because it does have an oleophobic coating on it. The edges of the screen protector are also rounded off. So when you run your finger over them, it's nice and smooth. It's got a cutout for your selfie cam. So you don't have to worry about it interfering with your pictures or your facial recognition. It's also nice and clear and touch is working perfectly fine on this. So now let's see if it's case friendly. I have my top case here. We'll put it over our phone. And it looks like it fits perfectly as well as it still has a gap all the way around the phone. So it's not even touching my case. So there's no lifting, no bubbles. It should work perfectly fine with your case, but as always, you'll need to test it out just to make sure because not all the cases are made the same. So that is really nice looking. So now we're protected on the outside and the inside. Now let's put on our camera protector. So again, just wipe off your lenses, then dry them off, then peel off your lens protector and just place them over your camera lenses. Press it into place and you're all set looks pretty nice on the phone as well. Now let's see if the camera protector will fit in my case. And there you go. Seems to fit, seems to fit perfectly fine. Now again, you will need to test this with your case because not all of these rear covers are made the same either. So now all of your screens and lenses are all protected. So now let's test out the scratch protection for the lenses. Now, typically tempered glass starts to scratch at around a number six. So we're going to start off with a number five Mose pick. Then we'll move on to a number six. And then finally a number seven. All right, if we take a closer look, you can see there are no scratches at the number five. There are slight at a number six and even deeper at a number seven. So scratch protection for the lenses are definitely on par with other tempered glass. So now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test for the front screen protector. So we're gonna be dropping a 2.4 ounce steel metal ball at a height of about two feet. If the screen protector doesn't crack, we'll move it up foot by foot until it eventually does. So we're starting off at two feet. Moving on to three feet. Moving on to four feet. Moving on to five feet. Moving on to six feet. Moving on to seven feet. So we do have a little mark there, but the screen has not cracked yet. Moving on to eight feet. And the highest I can go, eight and a half feet. So this screen protector lasted up until an eight and a half foot drop. That is some of the best drop protection that I've seen on some of these tempered glass screen protectors. So drop protection is a plus. So now let's move on to the scratch resistance. So let's start off with a number five, then move on to a number six, and then a number seven. So let's take a closer look. As you can see, there are no scratches at the number five. There are a little deeper at a number six. And I started the number seven inside one of these cracks. So it started to crack the screen. So I started again on a uncracked portion. As you can see, there is a little deeper at the level seven. So scratch resistance again is on par with other tempered glass screen protectors. So now let's see how easily the tempered glass would come off your phone if it got damaged. As you can see, it comes off very easily and still in one piece. Now you can also remove the inner screen protector as well. I would suggest using something thin like a piece of paper. I would recommend using something thin but yet rigid, kind of like this sticker paper here or maybe like the end of one of these wipes. It's kind of flat and rigid, but it won't scratch your screen. So once you get your little sticker or whatever underneath one of the edges, you can simply just peel it right off. And as you can see, the screen underneath is brand new.
So installation on all three of these protectors was really easy. The outer tempered glass screen protector is also case friendly, which is definitely a plus. Scratch protection for the tempered glass is also pretty standard for all tempered glass screen protectors. And as far as drop protection goes, this tempered glass has some of the best drop protection that you can get on any tempered glass. So I would definitely recommend the dome glass all in one pack and I'm going to give it a thumbs up. And then here we have the Whitestone Dome Glass Premium Screen Protector with liquid adhesive. First, let's see what you get inside the box. So here we have our little UV light. We have an installation packet, three vials of liquid adhesive, our installation jig, a bridge, two tempered glass screen protectors, some stickers and the installation guide. So before you do this installation, there are a couple things that I would definitely recommend you get before you start. One, you will need a power source for your UV lights. This uses a USB Type-C connection, so you can simply use a power adapter from your phone. And the next thing I would get is some paper towels and some Q-tips just in case it gets a little messy. Also make sure your UV light works. Then we need to apply our hinge sticker to the middle hinge of the phone. You're gonna peel off one side of the sticker and then place it on your phone. It should look something like that. Just make sure that you align the sticker perfectly with the metal and not go onto the actual screen. Then just leave this other side on here so you can peel it up. Then make sure to cover the speaker on the bottom, your SIM card slot, and the speaker on the top. Then you're gonna take your jig. We're going to install one of the felt pads on the side here. The next one we'll install after we put this over our phone. So open up your phone, place it on a flat surface just like this. Make sure there's no dust on the screen. Then place the jig over your phone just like this and press it into place. Then take your other felt pad and we're going to put it right underneath here. Just like that. Then you're gonna take this little plastic piece. We're going to stick it in the slot here, making sure that this little portion fits right into the slot here and you should hear a little clip. Also make sure your phone is flush inside the jig. So just lift up on it after you put this plastic piece in and just press up on your phone to make sure that it's up flush with the jig. Next, you wanna take one of these little speaker stickers, peel it off very carefully. We're going to place it over the little gray plastic piece and this is going to cover your front speaker. Once that's in place, I would get something kind of thin, kind of like this little black piece that comes with it, and then just press along the, the sticker to make sure that it's down over the speaker grill. There, so you can see it is totally covering the speaker and it's nice and flat. Just be very careful when you're doing that. It doesn't take a lot of pressure. Next, take that little black plastic piece that you have. We're going to stick it in between the little slot here just like that. Get one of your screen protectors ready. Next, you're gonna take this bridge and we're going to place it in each one of these sides here, just like that. Make sure your phone is on a flat surface because once we release the adhesive, the bubble may move if it's not. But if you need to, you can pick up this whole thing and kind of manipulate it so the bubble stays where it needs to. So take your vial, we're going to undo the purple portion first. Then flip this file upside down into this little hole here and then undo the black cap. So my bubble's already starting to move so I just lift it up and kind of move it around. Once all the liquid adhesive has come out you can put the black cap back on and then remove the vial. Then you can remove the little bridge. Then take one of your screen protectors. We're going to peel off the bottom protector then make sure that the camera cutout goes towards your phone. We're going to lay in the bottom portion first and the top portion is going to rest over the little black piece. Now what we need to do is make sure that this bubble here gets in between these two markers in the middle as a full circle. So we're going to let the, the jig down. The bubble should move down and once this circle hits the middle here, we'll pull out the pin. release the pin and then just let it cover the whole screen. Do not touch the screen. So now once the adhesive covers the whole screen and you don't see any areas where there's no adhesive, we can start the curing. 
So we're going to take our UV light, we're going to put it over the phone, we're going to cure the bottom, middle, and top for 15 seconds each. All you need to do is press this button once and it automatically counts down 15 seconds. All right, once that's done, we can remove our device and peel off the top sticker. Then just press out your phone. Then we can clean up any areas that we still see liquid adhesive, but be very careful to not touch the screen because we still need to cure it for a little bit more. So it doesn't look like the adhesive got anywhere on the sides there or the bottom. We just have a little bit here that we can just very gently clean up in the middle. For the most part, the installation looks pretty clean. All right, so once you've cleaned up your phone, we're going to do the second curing. This time we're going to be doing 60 seconds. So all you need to do is double press the button and it'll count down 60 seconds. Bottom, middle, top. Then we're going to do it one more time. Bottom, middle, and top for 60 seconds each. And then again, one more time. All right, and then once it's done curing, we can remove all our stickers. And as you can see, no liquid adhesive got into my front speaker here. Not even close. Speaker grill on the top, my SIM card tray, and the bottom speaker. So now I'm just going to clean this up one more time here. Get rid of any of the sticker adhesive. And then clean off our screen. And there we go. The screen looks amazing. I don't see any bubbles. There's no lifting. There's a nice cutout for your front camera. And like I said before, no liquid adhesive leaked anywhere on my phone. It's nice and smooth, just like the glass that's on the phone itself. As you can see, it's also nice and clear. Touch working perfectly fine, no issues there. The edges of the glass are also rounded off. So when you run your finger over it, it's nice and smooth. Now, as far as fingerprints goes, it does seem to pick up very minor fingerprints, but again, you can very, very easily just wipe those away because it does have an oleophobic coating to keep fingerprints to a minimum. So very nice so far. And as you can see, it doesn't come all the way to the edge of the phone. So it should be case compatible, but let's check that out right now. So here I have my top portion of my case. We'll put it on our phone. And as you can see, it fits perfectly. As you can see, there is still a gap around the screen. So this screen protector should be case friendly with most cases, if not all. It doesn't even begin to touch the screen on the sides. So you don't have to worry about any lifting or bubbles. All right, so now let's move on to the scratch resistance. So tempered glass typically starts to scratch around a number six. So we're gonna start off with a number five Mose pick and we'll move on from there. And here we have a number six and then a number seven. So as you can see, there are no scratches at the number five. There are scratches at a number six and a little deeper at a number seven. So scratch resistance on this screen protector is pretty much on par with other tempered glass screen protectors. So installation was pretty straightforward and it really wasn't that bad. If I can do it, I know that you can definitely do it. It is also case friendly, which is awesome. It does really well with fingerprints and the scratch resistance is standard for tempered glass screen protectors. So I would definitely recommend this screen protector and I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Now, if you want to take the screen protect, now if you want to remove the screen protector from your phone, you can do that as well. It's just going to take a little bit of patience. Now, if you want to remove it, what I would recommend doing is either taking your fingernail or a credit card or something thin and rigid and lift, starting to lift up the screen protector in one corner and then just kind of work your way around the whole screen until you can eventually lift up the whole screen protector. So I'm going to try to use the edge of this wipe to just try to start the screen protector. And as you can see, it's already starting to lift. Once that happens, you can kind of just continue down and release the whole screen protector. Now that was just the start. Once you get it started, you can kind of stick something better under there like 
a credit card that is definitely a lot easier to use just like that we'll remove this and then like I said just work your way around releasing the adhesive all the way around the screen you want to be very careful when you're doing this because if your screen protector is cracked you don't want to crack it anymore so just take your time so now the screen protector is totally released we can take it off and as you can see the screen is totally clean all the adhesive is still on the screen protector once you've totally taken off the screen protector you can just take an alcohol wipe and then just clean your screen off like you would normally and there you go the screen is not damaged and it looks brand new no adhesive at all so as you saw the installation really wasn't that hard and if you're worried about doing it just follow my instructions and you should be fine I've been using Whitestone Dome screen protectors for many years now and they've always treated me good, especially on the curved screens. So I would definitely recommend the Whitestone Dome Glass Premium Screen Protector and I'm going to give it a thumbs up. And then here we have the Whitestone Dome Premium Gen Film. So we get an installation guide here, this is part of it. We get a squeegee, a foam bumper, and an installation packet along with the screen protector. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to put down your foam guide. Then you're going to take your installation guide, make sure that the posts down here are facing upward and towards you. Then take your phone, making sure that the cameras are towards the top and put it into the guide. Then you can take your wipe and just press it into place. Then remove any dust you might see. Then take your posts, making sure that the bottom portion sticks into the little slot here. Just like that, press that into place. Now this is probably the most important part of the installation. When you take your screen protector, we're going to be peeling off the number one here. But when you peel it off, make sure it's underneath the screen protector and make sure that it doesn't peel off the screen protector with it. Very important. Once we've peeled that off, we're going to put the little holes, line them up with the posts on the guide. Then we're going to put the closest holes to you through the little posts on the guide here, not the small ones on the top, making sure that this does not touch the screen yet. So again, we're gonna peel off that underside screen protector. Be very careful not to take up the screen protector with it. Then place the holes in the guide. Hold on to the bottom of the screen protector, then put the posts through the bottom holes here, just like that. Then you're going to take your squeegee, we're going to press down on the bottom here and squeegee all the way to the other end of the phone without stopping, making sure you put pretty good pressure down as well. Now continue to hold and release the screen protector from the posts, then squeegee out any bubbles you might see, then very carefully peel off the top protector, making sure it doesn't take the underside screen protector with it. And take off the bottom, and then you can take out your phone. Now it does look like we have some bubbles in the center of the screen protector. So future me here to give you an update on those bubbles in the crease. I did let my phone sit closed overnight and when I opened it up in this morning, you can see that the bubbles in the crease are now totally gone. So if you do get any bubbles in the crease like I did, just know that they should disappear within a day or two. Now as far as touch goes, it is super smooth. It feels just like you're touching glass. Looks really nice. Other than those bubbles in the middle right here, there, there is no lifting around the edge of the phone. It looks perfect. As far as fingerprints goes, it doesn't seem to pick up fingerprints pretty much at all. There's super light smudges, but you really can't see, so that's definitely good too. And again, as far as touch goes, touch working perfectly fine. It is so smooth, guys. This is really, really nice. Like I said, it's got the, the touch and feel of glass. It is so smooth. Yeah, no problems there, and it's crystal clear. So now let's fold it up for the very first time, and we'll see what happens. So again, no lifting. Installation was not hard at all, and it looks absolutely beautiful on the phone. You have to feel this for yourself. It is so smooth.
If you're looking for a perfect replacement for the screen protector that came on the phone, I would definitely recommend the Premium Gen Film, and I'm going to give it a thumbs up. And then here we have the Whitestone Dome Glass EA Privacy Tempered Glass Screen Protector. So we get two privacy screen protectors and two installation packets. Then take one of your screen protectors, making sure that the number three with the top of the arrow is pointing towards the camera on your phone. Gonna remove this piece of foam in the back. We're gonna peel off the step one sticker, making sure you don't take your screen protector with it. Then just put this down on the top of your phone. Press it into place and slide your finger down the middle just like this and to the right and left. Then continue to hold down on the protector and we're gonna lift up our sticker. Then lift up on the guide and you're all set. We do have a couple bubbles that I'm gonna to try to squeegee out right now. The bubbles came out really easy and the installation looks really good. So as you can see, there is a cutout for your front camera and there's also a gap all the way around the front of the screen. So it should be case friendly, but we're gonna test that out. Feels just as smooth as the glass on the phone. As far as fingerprints, it does pick up some fingerprints, but you can very easily just wipe those away, no problem. The edges of the glass are also rounded, so when you run your finger over them, it's nice and smooth. Touch seems to work just fine, and it is also nice and clear. But now if we turn it to the left, the screen disappears, or to the right, the screen disappears as well. So you keep all your information private. So now let's see how it fits with our case. And it seems to fit perfectly. As you can see, there's still a slight gap all the way around the phone, so the screen is not lifting, there's no bubbles, and it should work with your case as well. So, so far so good. Let's move on to the scratch and the drop test. We're gonna start off at two feet. Moving on to three feet, four feet, five feet, six feet. Six feet. So this screen protector lasted up until a six foot drop, definitely good. So let's move on to the scratch resistance. So we'll start off with the number five, then move on to a number six, and then a number seven. So if we look a little closer, we can see that there are no scratches at a number five, a little deeper at a number six, and a little deeper than that at a number seven. So this screen protector is definitely on par with other tempered glass screen protectors. And then let's see how easily it would come off your phone. Pretty easy, and it comes off in one piece. So I'm definitely pleased with this privacy screen protector and it is definitely one of the better privacy screen protectors that I've tested. Installation is super easy. It is case friendly. Scratch resistance is pretty much standard and drop protection is also really good. So I would definitely recommend the screen protector and I'm going to give it a thumbs up. And then here we have the Spigen Glass TR Easy Fit. You get two screen protectors and an installation packet. Then take one of your screen protectors, making sure that the top signifier is going towards the top of your phone. We're going to peel off this little sticker here, making sure you don't take the screen protector with it. Then we're just gonna place this over the top of your phone, press it into place, and then run your finger down the middle. Wait 30 seconds. Then press down on the guide with one hand and we're going to remove the middle sticker. And then just lift up on the guide. And then all we need to do is remove the top protector. Now it does look like we have some bubbles on the screen protector, but you can just use your squeegee to get that out. And there we go. Perfect installation, covers the whole screen as well as your camera, but that shouldn't have any effect on your pictures or your facial recognition. It also does look like it should be case friendly as well, but we're gonna test that out. Now as far as touch goes, it is super smooth. Just like the glass that's on the phone, the edges of the glass are also rounded, so when you run your finger over them, they're nice and smooth. As far as fingerprints goes, it does seem to pick up some fingerprints, but you can just easily wipe those away because the screen does have an oleophobic coating. Now let's test out our facial recognition. 
working just fine and as you can see it is crystal clear touch working perfectly fine no issues whatsoever very nice and let's take a look at the camera and as you can see it is also super clear no problems there so now let's see how well it works with our case and it seems to fit perfectly no problems whatsoever and as you can see there's still a slight gap all the way around the phone so this should be case friendly with almost every case so now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test so we're going to be dropping a 2.4 ounce steel metal ball at a height of about two feet if the screen protector doesn't crack we'll raise it up foot by foot until it eventually does so here we go at two feet all right, now we're going to move up to three feet, four feet, five feet. So the speaking screen protector lasted up until five feet, which is definitely respectable, but it's not the best. So now let's move on to the scratch test. So typically tempered glass starts to scratch around a level six Mohs pick. So we're going to start off with a number five. Then we'll move on to a number six, and then a number seven. So if we take a closer look, as you can see, there are no scratches at the number five. There are slight at a number six, and a little deeper at a number seven. So again, pretty much on par with other tempered glass screen protectors. So now let's see how easily it would come off your phone if you were to try to take it off after it got damaged. So now let's see how easily it would come off your phone if you tried to take it off after it gets damaged. So it comes off pretty easy and it's in one piece. So I definitely still do like the Spigen tempered glass screen protectors. They're super easy to install. They are case friendly. Scratch protection is also pretty standard and drop protection isn't bad with a five foot drop. So I would still recommend the screen protector and I'm going to give it a thumbs up. And then here we have the official Samsung front protection film. So we get two film screen protectors, a squeegee, an installation guide, and some stickers. So the first thing you want to do is to open up your phone and lay it face down. Then take your installation guide. We're going to remove the little stickers on each side here. And then place the guide right down in the bottom right hand corner of your phone. Let's press that into place. Then take one of your screen protectors. We're going to peel off this number one here going to turn this upside down and then put the little guide with the posts on the guide here and then make sure that the little camera cutout lines up with the camera on your phone all right once you have that in place just run your finger over this little spot where the sticker was then take your squeegee we're going to put it right behind this line right here we're going to lift up on this part here make sure that it goes up and over your phone and just squeegee out then we're going to turn the phone around. Then we're going to put our squeegee behind the line right here. Then we're going to lift up on the screen protector, releasing it from the guide. Then we're going to remove the whole guide itself. Lift up on the screen protector and make sure it goes up and over our phone. And then just squeegee out. Then just try to squeegee out any bubbles you might see. Once that's done, very carefully remove the top protector from the screen protector, making sure it doesn't take the screen protector with it. So it does look like we have some bubbles in the middle of the screen because it seems like there's like some dust stuck underneath and over on the side here as well. But the rest of the screen protector looks pretty good. As you can see we have something stuck under the screen there in the middle and off to the side here. But other than that, it looks pretty good. Installation was also pretty easy. As far as the touch goes, it's got a little bit of grip to it. Not too bad as far as fingerprints goes. It does seem to pick up some fingerprints, but we can very easily just wipe those away. Not a problem, it looks pretty good. Let's test out our touch. Touch seems to be working just fine. No issues there. And it is also crystal clear. And again, we have that cutout for our selfie camera, so you don't have to worry about the screen protector interfering with that. And if we look at the front of the phone, we can see that there is a slight gap all the way around the phone, so it should be case friendly. Now let's see how well it fits with our case. 
it seems to go right up to the edge of the case itself I don't see any lifting everything seems to be good on the side here it does look like there is a slight gap but other than that not too bad so if you do have a case this screen protector should work just fine with it but again the only way to really tell is to use it with your specific case so now because the screen protector is not tempered glass it's not going to be the best protection for drops but it will definitely protect your screen from scratches and right now we're going to be doing the scratch test to see how durable it really is now tempered glass typically starts to scratch around the level six but again this is just film so it could scratch anywhere between a level two or three so here I have my Mohs pick we're going to start off with a level two which the tip is just plastic So it doesn't seem like it's scratching at all with the plastic tip. So now let's move on to the level three, which is a copper tip. And already it's making deep gouges in the screen protector that will not recover. So this screen protector scratch resistance is pretty typical. There are other screen protectors out there that will start to deform around a level two. So this is definitely a little better than that, but as you can see, it won't go past a level three. So installation for the screen protector was pretty easy. It does seem to be case friendly. Fingerprints rejection seems to be okay. And like I said, scratch resistance seems to be on par with other similar film screen protectors. So like I said before, if you're not worried about drop protection and you just wanna protect your screen from scratches, the Samsung front protection film will definitely do that for you. I would recommend this and I'm going to give it a thumbs up. And here we have the Zag XTR2 tempered glass screen protector. So we get one tempered glass screen protector, an installation guide, and some installation products. Then take your installation guide, make sure that where it says the top with the arrow is pointing upward. Take your phone, place it in the guide with the camera cutout facing towards the top, just like that. Then take your screen protector, making sure that the camera cutout is going towards the camera on the phone and this sticker is facing downward. Also note on the screen protector, the top holes are round, the bottom are oval to match up with the posts on the guide. Peel off the sticker from the underside of the screen protector, and then place your screen protector down over the guide, making sure it doesn't touch the screen of the phone yet. Just like that. And then they say just press your finger in the middle of the screen. It should adhere to your phone. We do have a bubble in the side here. Now I would recommend if you do have one, a squeegee or a credit card, uh, try to get those bubbles out before we take off the top screen protector. And it seems like the bubbles on the side come right out. Do that for every other portion of the screen you see. I don't know why they did not include a squeegee with this installation. And then once it's done, you can peel up your top protector and you're all set. Once that's done, you can take your phone out of the guide and we'll take a look at the screen protector. So installation was super easy. It does look like there is a slight gap all the way around your phone, so it should be case friendly, but we're going to test that out. And there is also a cutout for the front camera, so you don't have to worry about the screen protector interfering with your pictures or facial recognition. So looking at the screen protector, I don't see any bubbles. It came out really well. As far as touch goes, it is pretty smooth. Feels like the glass that's on the phone itself. Let's test out our fingerprints. So it does seem to pick up some fingerprints, but they easily just wipe away with minimal effort. Now let's test out how touch works. Seems to be working just fine. No problems there. And it is also crystal clear. It looks really nice. So now let's test it out with our case. It does seem to fit really well. And if you look, there is still a gap all the way around the case itself. So it's not actually touching the case. So there's no lifting. It should be case friendly. But again, the only way to tell if this is gonna work with your case is to actually try it out. But for the most part, it does look like it should be case friendly. So that's definitely a plus. The edges of the screen protector are also rounded off. So it feels really nice when you run your finger over it. So I'm liking the screen protector so far. Now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test.
So we're going to be dropping a 2.4 ounce steel metal ball at a starting height of about two feet. If the screen protector doesn't crack, we'll move it up foot by foot until it eventually does. So here we're starting off at two feet. Here we go at three feet, four feet, five feet, So this screen protector only lasted up until a five foot drop, which is definitely not the best drop protection I've seen for screen protectors. But let's move on to the scratch test. So screen protectors typically start to scratch around a level six. We're gonna start off with level five and move on from there. So here we have a number five, Mo's pick. Then here we have a number six. And then a number seven. Alright, so let's take a closer look. As you can see, there are no scratches at a level 5. There are slight at a level 6 and a little deeper at a level 7. So this tempered glass screen protector is pretty much on par with other tempered glass. It might be a little better because the, these are only light scratches, whereas some other tempered glass I've seen, it's a much deeper groove at a level 6. So installation for the screen protector was really easy. It does also seem to be case friendly. Scratch resistance seems to be a little better than typical tempered glass screen protectors. But as far as the drop protection goes, it's definitely not the best for drop protection, but it's also not the worst. It's pretty much in the middle of the road. So if you do like Zag and you want this screen protector, I would recommend it and I'm going to give it a thumbs up. So here we have a full screen protector kit that does include tempered and film screen protectors by SZJ CLTD. So this kit includes two front tempered glass screen protectors, two film inner screen protectors, two camera lens protectors, a squeegee, a whole bunch of wipes, two mats, and some installation stickers. So first place your phone on the mat. So we're gonna be installing the front screen protector first. So get one of those. Put your guide stickers on the screen just like that. I would also recommend turning your phone screen on that will help you place this on your phone. Peel off the underside protector and then place this on the phone the best you can. Once it's down, just press in the middle of the screen and it should adhere to your phone. As you can see, we do have some bubbles. Most of them come out by themselves, but you can use a squeegee to get those out. Then remove your stickers. So installation wasn't bad, it looks pretty good. I don't see any bubbles. As you can see, there is a cutout for your front camera. There is also a slight gap all the way around the phone, which should make it case friendly, but we're gonna test that out. As far as touch goes, nice and smooth, just like the glass that's on the phone. And for fingerprints, it does seem to pick up some fingerprints, but again, you can easily just wipe those away. Now let's test out our touch. Touch seems to work out just fine. No issues there, and the screen is nice and clear. The edges of the screen are also nicely rounded, so when you run your fingers over them, it's nice and smooth. So now let's try the phone out with our case. Now, as you can see, when I put this case on, we do have some lifting in all, pretty much all the corners here. So I'm gonna take the screen protector off and then reinstall it with the case on and see if we get any better results. And it doesn't look like we're able to do that either. As you can see in the corners, it kind of is not conformed with the case. So the screen protector is probably going to lift up if you end up putting a case on it, especially this one by Taurus. So if you're planning on using a case with the screen protector, it's probably gonna lift, but again, the only way to tell is to actually use your case with the screen protector. And as you can see, the only way for me to install the screen protector is to actually put it underneath the case because it just doesn't fit. So now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test. So here we go at two feet. Moving up to three feet. Four feet. Five feet. This screen protector lasted up until a five foot drop, so not too bad. That's pretty much middle of the road. So now let's test out the scratch resistance. So we're gonna start off with a number five, then move on to a number six, 
and then in number seven. So if we look a little closer, we can see that there are no scratches at the number five. There are slightly deeper at a level six and even deeper than that at a level seven. So scratch resistance is pretty much on par with other tempered glass screen protectors. So now let's move on to the installation of the inner film screen protector. So take one of your film screen protectors. You're gonna make sure that the one and the two are on each side of the screen protector. It really doesn't make a difference which side that is, as long as you're holding it like this to place it on your phone and making sure your camera is at the top of the screen. Once you have the protector in place where you want it, just run your finger down the middle here so it sticks to the screen while we install it. Then take your squeegee. We're going to put it behind the middle line here just like this. We're gonna lift up on that number one, making sure the screen protector goes up and over your screen and just squeegee out. Make sure you get rid of any bubbles you might see. Then just turn your phone around, put the squeegee behind the other line on the opposite side, lift up on that two side, making sure the screen protector goes up and over your screen and just squeegee out. So funny enough, it says to remove the screen protector from the corner and it shows a little tab to lift it up, but the screen protector doesn't have one of those tabs. So you don't really have a choice, but to try to lift it up from the middle here and that totally just ruins the screen protector. It says remove the film on the top of the protector and the person is lifting up some sort of a tab in the corner, which is not even there. So as you can see, it's lifting up the screen protector along with this top layer, and this screen protector is pretty much ruined. And as you can see, because it lifted the screen protector, this is all ruined right here. You can try to smooth it out. For the most part, you can, but there are gonna be a whole bunch of these little bubbles. And that is unfortunate because it feels pretty nice too. So let's fold up the phone for the first time. And it doesn't look like it's creasing in the middle either, which is unfortunate because they messed up the installation process for the screen protector. So now let's install the camera protectors. All I need to do is simply peel this off the back and then just place this over your cameras on your phone and you're all set. Now let's test this out with a case to see if they fit with this protector in place. Now the case that I'm using here does seem to fit with these protectors, but again, you're gonna have to test it out with the case that you have because the, not all cases are made the same. So now let's test out the scratch resistance. We're gonna start off with a number five, move on to a number six, and then a number seven. So if we look a little closer, you can see there's no scratches at the level five. There are a little deeper at a level six and deeper than that at a level seven. So this is pretty much the same as every other tempered glass that we've done scratch protection on. Now it does come with a lot of different accessories, but again, the front screen protector does not seem to be case friendly. And because the installation process for the inner screen protector pretty much renders it useless, I would not recommend the screen protector kit and I'm going to give it a thumbs down. And then here we have a film screen protector by Fang Tia. So we get an installation guide, three film screen protectors, two camera lens protectors, an installation mat, and some stickers and wipes. So take your installation guide, make sure that the top portion of the guide goes towards the camera on your phone and just press this over the top in place, just like that. Then take one of your screen protectors, making sure the camera cutout goes towards the camera on your phone. And this little sticker here is on the underside of the protector. We're gonna peel off that underside protector. Then put the guide holes on the posts on the guide, making sure the screen protector doesn't touch your phone. Then take your squeegee, put it down at the bottom of the screen protector hold down the phone and then just press this forward. Just like that, try to get, get out any, any bubbles you might see. Then very carefully lift up on the protector. Take off the guide and get out any bubbles you might still see. And there you go. So installation was pretty easy. As you can see, we have the cutout for our camera. As far as touch goes, it is nice and smooth. I don't see any lifting and I don't see any bubbles, which is definitely nice. As far as fingerprints goes, 
It does seem to pick up very minimal fingerprints, but as always, you can easily just swipe those away with minimal effort. Let's test out our touch. Touch seems to be working just fine. No issues there, and it's also crystal clear. Now let's see how well this fits with our case. Yeah, so now we have some lifting in the top corner on the top and down on the bottom right hand corner. So this case doesn't seem to be case friendly, but again, you will have to try it with your own case just because it doesn't work with this case doesn't mean it won't work with yours, but this will give you some idea of what you're looking at. But if you're not gonna be using a case on this phone, the screen protector will fit your phone perfectly fine. So now let's move on to the scratch resistance. Now, because this is film, we're going to be using the number two and number three Mohs pick. The number two is just plastic and the number three is copper. Typically, these screen protectors may start to scratch at a level two, but definitely at a level three. So let's start off with the two. So it does mark up the screen just a little bit, but I think that's just maybe some lifting. See what happens when we wipe it away. So using the wipe makes those marks go away. So that's definitely a plus. Now let's move on to the number three, which is copper. And immediately it starts to make scratches that will not go away. So that's pretty much on par with other film screen protectors just like this. So now let's test out the rear camera protectors. All I need to do is peel this off the plastic and then just place this over your cameras. Now let's test this out with a case. So this does seem to fit within the case that I'm using here, but again, you're gonna have to test it out with your own case because your cutout might be a little different than mine. So now let's test out the scratch resistance. Again, we're gonna start off with a number five and then move on to a number six and then finally in number seven. So as you can see, there are no marks at a level five. There are a little deeper at a level six and deeper than that at the level seven. So this is pretty much on par with other tempered glass. And if you wanna pick this off your phone, all you need to do is lift up on one of the corners and then just peel it off your phone and all those scratches disappear. So installation for the screen protector was really easy. It doesn't seem like the screen protector would be case friendly. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. And as far as scratch resistance goes, it does seem to be a little better than some other self-healing film screen protectors. If you're going to be using this screen protector with a case, I probably wouldn't recommend it. But if you're not, I would recommend it. And I'm going to give the screen protector a thumbs up. Then here we have a tempered glass screen protector by Natbach. You get two tempered glass screen protectors and some installation wipes. So put your guide stickers on the screen just like this, making sure the cutout for the camera goes towards the camera on your phone and make sure the sticker, the number one is underneath, I'm going to peel off that protector. And I would also turn on your phone screen so you can place the screen protector easier. And once it's in place, just touch in the middle of the screen and it should adhere to your phone. And it does look like we have some bubbles. Then take off your guide stickers. And I was able to get out most of the bubbles just with my finger. Now there is a slight bubble in the corner here that doesn't seem to want to go away. And we have one down at the bottom. It's not horrible, but it's just something I wanted to note. Installation wasn't horrible. Could have been better with a guide. But we do have our cutout for our front camera, so it's not going to interfere with the facial recognition. As far as the feel of the screen protector, it feels just like the glass on the phone. And as far as touch goes, touch seems to be working just fine. I don't see any issues here. And it's also crystal clear. The edges of the screen protector are also rounded off. So when you run your finger over them, it's nice and smooth. Now let's see how well this fits with our case. It does seem to fit perfectly with our case. It looks like the screen protector does come right up to the edge of the case on this side, and there is a slight gap over on the right. So it should be case friendly with your case, but again, you'll have to test it out with your case just to make sure. So if you were to install the screen protector with your case, I would probably put your case on and use it as a guide for installation. As far as fingerprints goes, 
It does seem to pick up some fingerprints, but because the glass is so smooth, you can easily just wipe those away. All right, so now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test. All right, we're gonna start off at two feet. All right, now we're gonna move up to three feet. So this screen protector only lasted up until a three foot drop, which definitely is not good. So now let's move on to the scratch test. So we're gonna start off with a number five. And then move on to a number six. And then a number seven. So let's take a closer look. As you can see, there are no scratches at the level five. There are at a level six and deeper than that at the level seven. So this screen protector is pretty much on par with other tempered glass screen protectors. So now let's see how easily it would come off your phone. So it does come up in one piece and it's not too hard to take off. So installation wasn't horrible for this screen protector. It could have been better with a guide. It does seem to be case friendly. Scratch protection, again, is also pretty much on par with other tempered glass screen protectors, but the drop protection is not that great. So because there are better screen protectors with much better drop protection, I would not recommend the screen protector and I'm going to give it a thumbs down. Then here we have Super Shield's tempered glass screen protector. So we get three tempered glass screen protectors and an installation kit. So put your guide stickers on the screen just like this, making sure that the sticker is on the underside of the screen protector and your camera cutout is going towards the camera on your phone. Now if you do have a case, I would definitely recommend putting the case on your phone and using it as a guide to try to help you install this the best you can. So we'll peel off that bottom screen protector and then use our guide stickers to help place this on our phone. Once you have it in place, I would run your finger down the middle of the screen protector. You should be able to push out any bubbles you see with your finger. Take off your guide stickers. And there we go. Not a bad installation. Looks really nice on the phone. And as you can see, it is case friendly. We do still have a slight gap all the way around the screen protector. And we have our cutout for our camera. As far as touch goes, feels nice and smooth, just like the glass that's on the phone. And for fingerprints, it does seem to pick up minimal fingerprints. But again, you could just easily just wipe those away. As far as touch, touch seems to be working just fine. No issues there. Very nice. And it is also crystal clear. And the edges of the glass are also rounded off, so when you run your finger over them, the glass is nice and smooth. And as you can see, the screen protector fits perfectly where the display is on the phone. I also don't see any bubbles, any lifting, so that's definitely a plus. So now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test. We're going to start off at two feet. So this screen protector only withstood a two foot drop. That's the worst drop protection I've seen on any screen protector. So let's move on to the scratch test. So let's start off with a number five and move on to a number six and then a number seven. So if we look closer, you can see there's no scratches at a level five. There is at a number six and even deeper at a number seven. So again, this tempered glass screen protector is pretty much on par with other tempered glass screen protectors for scratch protection. Let's see how easily it would come off your phone. So not bad, comes off in one piece. So installation wasn't horrible for the screen protector. It does seem to be case friendly. Scratch resistance is also pretty standard, but drop protection is, like I said, some of the worst I've seen for any tempered glass screen protector. So because of that, I would definitely not recommend this screen protector and I'm going to give it a thumbs down. And here we have a tempered glass screen protector by AACL. So you get three tempered glass screen protectors, an installation guide, installation wipes and stickers, and two rear camera protectors. So take your guide, making sure that the top goes towards the camera on your phone, and just press this into place, just like that. Then take your screen protector, making sure that the sticker is on the underside of the protector and the ca camera cutout goes towards the top of the guide. I'm gonna peel off that sticker. Then we're gonna place the screen protector inside the guide, just like this, drop it into place, and then press right down the middle of the screen protector and it should adhere to your phone. 
Then just hold down on the phone, lift up on the guide very gently, remove that, and then you can smooth down any bubbles you might see. I just used my finger and got out most of the bubbles. There are a few bubbles still on the side of the screen protector that don't want to seem to go away. It's not horrible, they're pretty small. This one in the bottom here looks like there was something caught underneath the screen protector. There is a good gap around the screen, so it should be case friendly. We're gonna test that out in just a second. As far as touch goes, feels nice and smooth, just like the glass that's on the phone. And for fingerprints, it does seem to pick up some fingerprints, but as always, you can just wipe those away very easily. Let's test out our touch. Touch working just fine. The screen is crystal clear as well, very nice. The edges of the screen protector are also rounded off, so when you run your finger over them, it is nice and smooth. So now let's put on our case. So it does seem to be case friendly. As you can see, there is a healthy gap pretty much all the way around the screen, so it should work with your case as well. And as you can see, it fits the screen perfectly. So now let's move on to the most important part, the scratch and the drop test. We're gonna start off at two feet. So this screen protector only withstood a two foot drop, which again is some of the worst drop protection I've seen for screen protectors. So now let's move on to the scratch test. So we're gonna start off with a number five, then move on to a number six, and then a number seven. So as you can see, there are no scratches at the number five. There are a little deeper at a number six and a little deeper than that at a number seven. So again, scratch resistance is pretty standard with other tempered glass screen protectors. Now let's see how easily it would come off your phone. And not too bad, it is still in one piece. So installation for this screen protector was really easy. It does seem to be case friendly. Scratch resistance is pretty standard, but drop protection is some of the worst that I've seen. So because of that, I'm not going to recommend the screen protector and I'm going to give it a thumbs down. Now let's test out the rear camera protector. Then just place this over your cameras. So now let's see if this still works with your case even though we have our protector on here. So it does still seem to perfectly fit with the case that I have here, but you're gonna have to try it out with yours because every back portion of a case is different. But it does seem to be fitting perfectly fine here. So now let's test out the scratch resistance. So again, we're gonna start off with a number five and move on to a number six. And then finally, a number seven. So if we take a closer look, you can see there are no scratches at the number five. There are a little deeper at a number six and a little deeper than that at the number seven. And then here we have a tempered glass screen protector by JTEC. We get two screen protectors, two camera protectors, and some installation packets. So put on your guide stickers just like I have them here, making sure that the camera hole is going towards the camera on your phone, and make sure this sticker is underneath the screen protector. So we need to peel that off. Then we're gonna hold our guides and install this best we can on our phone. It would probably help if you turn the phone on as well. And once you have it down on your phone, you can see the screen protector will automatically start to cover your phone screen. Just let that continue. Once that's done, we can take off our guide stickers and then press out any bubbles you might see. So installation does look pretty nice. Now, there's one thing that worries me about the screen protector and, the, and that's the fact that it comes almost all the way to the edge of the phone. So this might not be case friendly, but we're going to test that out. But installation again, looks pretty good. I don't really see uh, any bubbles on the screen, but installation looks pretty good. I don't see any bubbles on the screen, no lifting. As far as touch goes, feels nice and smooth, just like the glass that's on the phone. As far as fingerprints goes, it does seem to pick up some fingerprints. So for cleaning off this screen, it seems like it does require a little bit more effort to get those to go away. So let's test out the touch. Touch seems to be working just fine. No issues there, and the screen is also nice and clear. The edges of the screen are also rounded off, so when you run your finger over them, it's nice and smooth. So now let's see what it's like when we put our case on here. And immediately the screen protector starts to lift. You can see the big bubble there, 
and in the corner in the top. And you also probably won't be able to use your case as a guide when installing the screen protector either because it's got some sharp edges. It doesn't totally round off like the case does. So if you're going to use a case with the screen protector, you most likely are going to have lifting issues. So now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test. We're going to start off at two feet. Now we're going to move on to three feet, four feet. So this screen protector only withstood a four foot drop. It's definitely not the worst, but it's not the best. So now let's move on to the scratch test. So we'll start off with a number five and move on to a number six and then a number seven. So as you can see, there are no scratches at a level five, a little deeper at a number six and a little deeper than that at a number seven. So pretty standard for scratch protection. Now let's see how easily it lifts off your phone. Pretty easy and it's still in one piece. So installation was fairly easy. It does not seem to be case friendly. Scratch protection is also pretty standard for tempered glass, but the drop protection only lasted up until a four foot drop, which again is definitely not the worst, but it's not the best. So I wouldn't recommend the screen protector and I'm going to give it a thumbs down. So now let's test out the rear camera protector. So just pull off the rear camera protector, then just place it over your phone's cameras and then press it into place. And there you go. Now let's see if this works with our case. And as you can see, it fits perfectly, but you will need to test this with your case because not every cutout is made equal. So now let's test out the scratch resistance. We'll start off with a number five and move on to a number six and then a number seven. So if we look, as you can see, there are no scratches at a number five. There are a little deeper at a number six and a little deeper than that at a number seven. And then here we have a tempered glass screen protector by LYWHL. So we get two tempered glass screen protectors, two rear camera protectors, an installation guide, and some wipes and stickers. So just take your guide, making sure that the top portion goes towards the top of your phone. Just press it over your phone into place, just like that. Then take one of your screen protectors, peel off the underside protector, and then just lay this down inside the guide, and then press down on the middle of the screen protector, and it should adhere to your screen. Now it does look like the screen protector might get caught up on the guide, so you can try to just push out the bubbles with your finger, and then just lift up on the guide. Now it does look like we have a little bubble here. I was able to just push that out with my finger. So the installation was really easy. I don't see any bubbles or lifting, which is really nice. We do have a cutout for our front camera and there is a slight gap all the way around the screen, but I don't think this screen protector is going to be case friendly and I'll show you that in just a minute. As far as touch goes, nice and smooth, just like the glass that's on the phone. And for fingerprints, it does seem to pick up minimal fingerprints, which is good. You can wipe them away very easily as well. Touch seems to be working just fine. No issues there. And it's also crystal clear. The edges of the screen protector are also rounded off. So when you run your finger over the screen, it is nice and smooth. Now let's try our case. And just as I suspected, as you can see, it's lifting in the corners. And the reason for that is because the screen protector is not symmetrical like the inside of this case is. It's a little more sharp on each one of the ends here and a little more rounded off in the corners here. So you're going to get lifting. So if you're going to use a case, you're most likely going to get lifting with this screen protector. So now let's move on to the drop and the scratch test. We're going to start off at two feet. We're going to move on to three feet. Four feet five feet. So this screen protector only withstood a five foot drop, which is not horrible. It's probably, it's middle of the road. So now let's test out the scratch resistance. So we'll start off with a number five and move on to a number six and then a number seven. So as you can see, there are no scratches at the number five. There are slight at a level six and a little deeper than that at the number seven. So again, pretty standard for tempered glass screen protectors. So now let's put on our rear camera protector. Just peel it off the plastic. 
then place it over your cameras and press it into place. So let's see if it fits with our case. And it seems to fit perfectly. But again, you're gonna to need to test it out with your case because not all cases are the same. Let's test the scratch resistance. Start off with a number five, then a number six, and then a number seven. So if we look a little closer, as you can see, there are no scratches at the number five, there are at the number six, and a little deeper at a number seven. Let's see how easily it would come off your phone. Not too bad, and it's still in one piece. So installation for the screen protector was really easy. It doesn't seem to be case friendly, so if you're gonna use a case, don't use the screen protector. Scratch protection also seems to be on par with other tempered glass screen protectors, and drop protection was pretty much middle of the road. So with all that said, I would recommend the screen protector, and I'm going to give it a thumbs up. And then here we have a privacy glass protector by Astar. So we get two tempered glass screen protectors, an installation guide, and some wipes. So you're gonna take your guide, making sure that the top goes towards the top of your phone, and then just press that over your phone just like this. Then take your screen protector, making sure that the little camera hole goes towards the camera on your phone, and we're gonna peel off the underside protector. Then just lay this down in the guide, and then just run your finger down the middle. Then press down on the protector, and lift up the guide, and we do have some bubbles. I'm gonna to try to get those out right now. So installation was really easy. I don't see any bubbles. Looks really nice. You got your cutout right there. As far as feel goes, it feels just like the glass that's on your phone. So that's pretty nice. Now, as you can see, because this is a privacy screen, it will dull your screen a little bit. So you might have to turn up your brightness to compensate for that. But as you can see, it, once you do that, it looks really clear. Touch seems to be working just fine. No issues there. Now for fingerprints, it does seem to pick up minimal fingerprints that you can just easily wipe away. Now let's check out that privacy screen. So you're looking at your phone and you turn it off to the left, you can't see anything, to your right, it disappears. That is so cool. Doesn't seem to work that way, just left and right. Now the screen protector does not come all the way to the edge of the phone screen, but there's not much of a gap. So the screen protector is most likely not going to be case friendly, but let's test it out. So here I have my case. Let's see if there's any lifting. And as you can see, there is lifting in the bottom corners here and I don't really see any in the top. Now the reason for that is because the screen protector is not cut symmetrically like this case is. There's more of a sharper edge on the back corner here than there is in the front, so the screen protector goes underneath your case, causing it to lift. So if you're gonna use a case, you're not gonna be able to use this screen protector. See, as you can see, it's lifting in the top left corner as well. So now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test. We're gonna start off at two feet. Moving on to three feet. Four feet. Five feet. Six feet. Seven feet. So I'm pretty impressed. This screen protector lasted up until a seven foot drop, which is excellent, especially for privacy screen protectors. So now let's move on to the scratch test. So we'll start off with a number five and move on to a number six and then a number seven. All right, so if you take a closer look, as you can see, there's no scratches at a number five. They're a little deeper at a number six and deeper than that at a number seven. So this is pretty standard for tempered glass scratch protection. So let's see how easily it would come off your phone. Very easily. And it's in one piece. So installation was really easy. It went really well. This screen protector, unfortunately, doesn't seem to be case friendly. Scratch protection is pretty standard for tempered glass screen protectors. And drop protection is really good at seven feet. So if you're looking for a privacy screen protector, I would definitely recommend this one. And I'm going to give it a thumbs up.
And then here we have a full privacy screen protector kit by Malamdoy. So we get two tempered glass screen protectors for the front screen, two inner film privacy screen protectors, an installation tray, an installation guide, a squeegee, two camera protectors, and installation wipes. So we're going to install the tempered glass first. So take your guide, making sure the top goes towards the camera on your phone and just press this into place. Then take your screen protector, making sure the camera hole cut out goes towards the top of your phone. I'm gonna peel off the underside protector, drop this into your guide, then run your finger up the middle and it should adhere to your phone. Then press down on your phone and remove the guide. We do have a bubble that I'll get out just by lifting the screen a little bit. So not a bad installation. We do have just a couple bubbles right there that won't go away. But installation was pretty easy. This does have a nice gap all the way around the phone. So it should be case friendly, but we'll test that out in just a minute. As far as fingerprints goes, it does pick up some fingerprints, but they easily wipe away. As far as the feel, feels just like the glass that's on the phone, which is nice. Touch, working fine. Now again, because this is a privacy screen, it will dull your screen, so you will most likely have to turn up your brightness, maybe all the way. The edges of the screen protector are also rounded, so when you run your finger over them, they are nice and smooth. So let's see how it fits with my case. It does seem to fit perfectly. As you can see, there is a slight gap still, and it doesn't actually touch the case. So there is no lifting, very nice. Now again, the only way to test this out with your case is to actually use it because not all cases are made the same, but for the most part, it should be case friendly. So let's test out the privacy. So if we move it to the left, as you can see, everything disappears to the right, but you can still see it if you move it up and down. It's only left and right that the screen disappears. So now let's move on to the inner screen. So now take your guide, making sure that the top is facing up towards the top, and we're gonna put our phone into the guide with the camera coming over here. So you wanna make sure that your cameras go into that little slot, just like that. Then press your phone gently into place, then take your screen protector, making sure that the little camera hole lines up with the camera hole on your phone. And also these holes line up with the posts on the guide. Take one more look, making sure that the camera hole lines up on your phone. Then once you're satisfied where it is, just run your finger down the middle here. Take one more look at that camera hole, making sure that it's still lined up. Then you're gonna take your squeegee, put it behind this red line right here, lift up on the push number one side, making sure that that goes up and over your phone and then just squeegee out. Just like this. Then flip it around, then put your squeegee behind the black line here, lift up on tab number two, making sure it goes up and over your screen and then just squeegee that out as well. You might have to help it out if it gets stuck. Then once you're done, we just need to peel up the top layer. Again, be very careful that it doesn't take the screen protector with it when you lift up the top protector. And you can take your phone out. It doesn't look too bad. There are a couple places where we do have some bubbling, some weird looking swirly marks, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna to try to get these bubbles out really quick, but you need to be very careful not to press too hard because you might damage the screen protector. So I was able to get out some of the bubbles. There are some bubbles still on the screen and they may disappear within a couple days, but it's not horrible. Now, as far as the touch goes, it's nice and smooth, just like the protector that's on the phone that came with it. I don't see any lifting, anything like that. It looks pretty good. There's the cutout for your camera on the top, perfectly placed. So now as far as fingerprints goes, it does seem to do a pretty good job at rejecting fingerprints. I don't see any on there. As far as touch, facial recognition still working fine, touch working fine. And as you can see, you can still see your screen. Again, you will probably have to 
turn up your brightness because this does dull the screen down a little bit, but touch seems to be working just fine, no issues there. So now let's fold this up the first time and see how well it stays down. Very nice. I don't see any lifting whatsoever. And keep in mind, this screen protector was installed right over the one that was installed on my phone. So that's definitely a plus. As you can see, there is no lifting, no bubbles, even though I folded the phone up. So that is definitely a plus. So let's test out our scratch test with a fingernail. So it does feel kind of rubbery when you do that. It does seem to pretty much resist my fingernail and I don't see any scratches. So that's definitely nice too. Now, if you happen to run something more abrasive across the screen, like maybe a key, you will definitely damage the screen protector beyond repair. So now let's install the rear camera protectors. So all I need to do is peel off the protector and then just place it over the cameras. Press it into place and you're all set. Now let's see if this fits with our case. And it does seem to fit perfectly. Now again, keep in mind, you will probably have to test it with your own case because not every case is made the same. But for this particular case, it seems to fit perfectly. Now let's test out the scratch resistance. So we're gonna start off with a number five and move on to a number six and then a number seven. So if we take a closer look, as you can see, there's no scratches at the number five. There are a little deeper at a number six and deeper than that at a number seven. So now let's move on to the drop and the scratch test for the front screen. We're gonna start off at two feet. Go. So the Malam Doi screen protector only lasted up until a two foot drop, which is some of the worst drop protection possible. So now let's move on to the scratch test. So we're gonna start off with a number five, and then a number six, and then a number seven. So as you can see, there's no scratches at the number five. There are a little deeper at a number six and deeper than that at the number seven. So scratch resistance is pretty standard on this tempered glass screen protector. Now let's see how easily it would come off your phone. Pretty easy and it's still in one piece. So it's very unfortunate that this tempered glass screen protector does not have good drop protection because I really did like everything else about it. Installation was really easy. It does also seem to be case friendly. Scratch protection is also pretty standard, but the drop protection is some of the worst I've seen for tempered glass. The inner screen protector was also really easy to install. It seemed to fit perfectly on the phone, even over the pre-installed screen protector on the phone. There were a few bubbles, but it's really not that horrible. And the rear camera protector is pretty much the same as all the other rear camera protectors. So because the drop protection on this privacy screen really wasn't that good, and there was another privacy screen option that had much better drop protection, I would not recommend the screen protector and I'm going to give this kit a thumbs down. If you all are enjoying the video, it would really help out my channel if you gave me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. So now that we've had a chance to test out all those screen protectors, it's time for me to give you my recommendations on which ones are the absolute best based on a couple different categories. So now I'm gonna let you know which one was the absolute worst and that was the SZJ CLTD screen protector kit. Now, even though it does come with a lot of different screen protectors, the outer tempered glass screen protector was not case friendly, and it also didn't do very well in the drop test. The inner screen protector installation was also horrible. It didn't even come with the tabs that you needed to take off the protective film, which totally ruined the screen protector underneath. And the rear camera protector that it comes with, it's pretty much exactly like all of the other tempered glass protectors that I've tested here today. The outer tempered glass screen protector wasn't that bad, but it's not case friendly. Now, if you're just looking for an outer film screen protector, I would recommend the Samsung front protection film. This screen protector was super easy to install, it's case friendly, and it pretty much protects the whole front screen of your phone. Now, even though it's not the best for drop protection, it will protect your screen from scratches. 
Now, if you're looking for a tempered glass privacy screen protector, there were actually two that really stood out to me. One was the Whitestone Dome EA privacy screen and the Astar tempered glass privacy screen protector. Both of these screen protectors were super easy to install. They're both case friendly and they both did pretty good on the drop test as well. So I would recommend either one of these tempered glass privacy screen protectors. Now, if you're looking for one of the best all-in-one kit that protects your camera lenses, your front screen, and your inner screen, I would definitely recommend the Whitestone Dome all-in-one pack. You can also purchase the Clear EA Tempered Glass Screen Protector for the outer screen separately from this pack as well if you don't want the whole thing. And while we're talking about the EA Glass, that got the highest drop protection possible out of all the screen protectors we've tested here today. All of the screen protectors were really easy to install. The inner screen protector looks amazing and the camera lens protector also did really well on the scratch test. So if you wanna protect all your screens and lenses, again, I would definitely recommend the Whitestone Dome all-in-one pack. And if you're looking for the best possible inner screen protector, I would definitely recommend the Whitestone Dome Premium Gen Film. This screen protector was super easy to install, looks amazing on your phone, it feels just as smooth as glass, and it does an excellent job at fingerprint rejection. So if you're looking for the best replacement for your inner screen protector, again, I would definitely recommend the Whitestone Dome Premium Gen Film. So if you all made it this far in the video, thank you so much for all your support. I really do appreciate it. And if there was a screen protector that you didn't see in this video that you'd like to see in future videos, let me know in the comments below. And I'd also really like to know what your favorite screen protector was and why you chose it. And don't forget to check out my best and worst cases video for the brand new Galaxy Z Fold 5, which should be on your screen right now, where I test out a whole bunch of different cases all in one place. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.